It's midnight. Do you know where your children are? Previously on The Chris David Show. Kelly writes, I'm a cut straight to the chase. My man is too small. That's just how I feel. Burr. You're affecting your credit for a big booty. At 21 years old, it's going to take you a minute to pay that off. That's definitely a red flag. He might not even be ready for all that. It's time to bless and release. You have your whole life to get a fatty. I, he just, oh, I just want to deck this dude. I don't see an issue with having a fetish unless you're leaving out a significant part of the story. Um, so, like, have you done anything that was disrespectful to your wife involving your fetish? Um, are you entertaining other people's feet? I'm glad we were able to open you up to a whole new world. Well, I don't know what's in that plant, but I'm going to just say this. Whatever's in that plant, we need to send it to Kelly so she can rub it on her man's... Welcome back to the Chris David Show. I'm your host, Chris David. You already know who our guest is today, but if you don't, that's okay, because you will. Joining us for the spring summer edition of our Talk Like Sex Q&A, welcome back our most requested guest, clinical certified sexuality coach, Mrs. Tony Drumright Antoine. Coach Tony! <laughs> Hey. Back, back, back. Yes. <laughs> okay. How are you? I'm good. Everything is good. A little happy in my personal life, but good, good, good. <laughs> well, listen, we, same here, but we ain't going to talk about that. We're going to help these good people. Yes. So before we get started, I want you to let everyone know how they can contact you for coaching sessions, if they want to order products, schedule parties, and mm -hmm. everything else. Yeah. So I have a couple of websites. I have my Bedroom Candy website because, of course, I am an intimate luxury consultant with Bedroom Candy. Um, my website for that, just in case you want to go straight into it and get to the toys and the, the bath and body products, is bkparties.com slash 6109. Or if toys aren't your thing, we do have cosmetics as well. That's candycoded.com slash 6109. Or if you want to just learn a little more about the business, um, not necessarily the business, but if you want to learn about sexual health and wellness, you can go to my business website, which is thekittychronicles.co. Tony, is it coded with a K also? Yes, candy, candy coded. coded, both with a K. Okay. okay. All right. Um, okay. So we'll jump into the first one. The first one is actually an update from Shahida. She's 35 and she's from Philly. Now, Shaida wrote in last uh, to our last uh, Talk Like Sex uh, Q&A because she was having trouble orgasming without loud music. Now, did Shaida take Coach Tony's advice? <laughs> Let's find out. Let's see. Okay, so it says, Hi, Chris and Tony. Thank you for your advice. I lowered the volume of the music down to a two, and instead of the radio, I play smooth jazz on Pandora. Oh, nice. I watched another one of your shows where you talk about some jazz. Oh, okay, I know what show that is. So I found some I like, and now it sets the mood. So thank you. And Tony Shaida also let us know the correct pronunciation of her name. It's not <laughs> Sheena, it's Shaida. And by the way, if any of you have names that people often mispronounce, just give us the correct pronunciation in your email. And you know, um, Tony, her name reminds me of remember that singer Saida Garrett. Remember yep, her? Sure, did. Yeah. Yeah, that's what her name. Singer for was it Prince or some? Oh, Michael no, Jackson. Uh, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Backup singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah but um, good for you, uh, Shaggy. Right, you. yeah, that made me happy. A positive update. <laughs> we love when people listen. You know, good for her. Yeah. And, um, she's been listening to that that uh, that Najee apparently. Told me. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the danger. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Shaida made me think of someone, too, that I knew who used to, I don't know, even know why I'm telling this story. But listen, this is the sex coach, so I'm going to tell this story. I knew somebody who used to blast loud music in the bathroom while they were watching 
adult material on their phone. But anyway, it's Shaida. I'm glad you got some resolve. So thank you. Thank you for writing. Um, so okay, this next one comes from Eileen. She's 42 and she's also from Philly. So let's clap it up for her. Eileen writes, good night, Chris and Tony. Oh, wait a minute, Tony. If good night isn't like the most stereotypical Anglophone Caribbean greeting. Yeah. <laughs> what? Very much so. I catch myself sometimes. I'm like, good night. Um, good night to you too, Eileen. Um, I'm writing to let you know that I'm dating a new man from Brooklyn. He is younger than me and very sexy. I want to do everything with him, but he only likes missionary. I want to be in other positions. I really hate missionary. He is so old school despite being 28 years. Miss Tony, please help. And Tony, I was so tempted to do an accent while I was reading that. <laughs> <laughs> So as soon as I heard this, I thought about a couple of products that we sell. Um, one is the book called Write Em Cowgirl. It shows like different positions and techniques that people don't re even realize they have a name. So normally at my bedroom candy parties, I do this icebreaker where I have everyone tell me their name and their favorite position. And it's so funny because people try to like demonstrate what the position is because they don't know specifically what the name is. And so ta -da, here is the book. So this book is very, uh, it's very detailed and graphic. It has positions for expectant mothers. Anybody can get it in. But one of the things that I would recommend is maybe, you know, at your leisure, if you're able to or in the position, you can get a book like this. Again, it's called Ride em Cowgirl. You can get it on my website. And one of the things you can do is maybe foreplay. Each of you can take a page of the book maybe, or you can even alternate. So one night you can do the missionary, but the next night you can can, you know, choose randomly a page from the book and, you know, work that position. So maybe you'll be introducing something that he'll like. And I can't see him not liking it. And there's so many different positions in that book that there's definitely something that you both will enjoy. Um, and the other product, and we'll actually have to put a picture up, it's called Strike a Pose. So they're actually um, cards. So they're like, um, you know, a, a deck of cards. And so there's three ways to play. There's about 50 cards that have uh, Kama Sutra positions. So that's something that you can do for um, foreplay. Um, again, you can kind of, you know, uh, flip the deck around, then randomly choose a card. Um, and then you'll be introducing new positions to him and opening up his mind. So number one, I would also suggest that you have a conversation about why he's so hell-bent on just missionary. Um, because there's so many different options out there. And then on the flip side, I would say don't completely dismiss missionary because you can get a little acrobatic with that too. Um, if you're really relaxed, your legs can go, and I don't know how flexible you are, but your legs can go back to damn near your ears. Um, and so that is kind of opening up you so that not only he'll be able to go in further, but she'll be feeling something different as well. Um, so I definitely encourage that, but definitely have a conversation and just find out why he's just really, really into missionary, but also consider those two products that I mentioned. So again, the first one is called Ride em Cowgirl. Um, it's the book. And then the second is called Strike a Pose. Um, and they're a deck of cards. Um, and that basically kind of spices it up and, you know, give you all some alternatives. So, yeah. Well, thank you for your letter, Eileen. And Tony, Eileen seems like such a nice lady, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I hope she takes your, you know, I hope she takes your recommendations. Um, yeah. Now, this next question isn't necessarily a sex question, but don't worry. Coach Tony is certified to catch whatever we throw at her. <laughs> listen, we have baseball season. I, I, I can't help it. Anyway, this question comes from Keisha. Keisha's 26 and she's from Brooklyn. Hello to the Chris David Show and sex coach Tony. My name is Keisha with two E's and I'm from Crown Heights, Brooklyn, baby. You know those Brooklyn folks is going to let us know. <laughs> they from Brooklyn. I mean, Tony, down to the intersection. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love your shows with the coach. Thank you. And I hope you guys can answer this for me because it's not really a sex question. It's more so about body image. So please give me a chance. I'll be quick. I promise. LML. Now, Tony, what, what's LML? Is it, is not, it licking my lips? No, laughing mad loud. So oh. <laughs> I didn't hear it. I like laugh out loud. I laugh my ass off laughing mad loud. <laughs> 
Wow, I gotta really get it. You know what I thought it was? I thought it was when you do your fingers like this. <laughs> Doesn't it look like an L and an M and an L? Yes, yes. That's what I thought it was. Okay. <laughs> she listen, we're over 30, all right? So. Well, I knew that one. <laughs> apparently, Tony isn't today. But listen, the only TikTok we know is you don't stop, all right? That might be good for your, for your time, for Keisha. But anyway. Um, Keisha continues, my sex life is fine. I'm very satisfied in that department, even though I'm single. Cons I'm considering getting some cosmetic surgery because I'm very insecure about my nose. I heard your advice last season about the BBL and I thought it was excellent, but my nose got me teased by my brothers and they still do it when we get together at holidays and family gatherings. I just think it will improve my aesthetic and open me up to more opportunities. Please don't drag me, guys. Okay, so no drag, um, but just know that I'm not encouraging it. Um, now, of course, the first thing I would suggest is that you open up to your brothers about how you feel, and you might have to do that individually. Um, now, if you do decide to have surgery, you know, it's completely up to you, but who's to say that the doctor is not going to butcher your nose? And then what? You know, um, but one thing that I, about that question I wasn't curious about was when you said um, new opportunities might open up. So what do you mean by new opportunities? Like, what is that about? Um, so I'm just really, really curious about that. But also consider this. It's family gathering day. The brothers are there. You walk into the room and then they clown you about getting your nose done. Then what? Um, so I'm just going to conclude that you do have a conversation with them. And then according to how it goes, you might have to limit your interactions just for the sake of protecting your peace. Um, or you can go lower and clown them too. I'm pretty sure they each have an insecurity or something. Like, you know how Michelle Obama says, when we go low, they go low, we go high. You can take it to the floor. <laughs> so. Misha, the bar is in hell. Go even lower. <laughs> So I'm not necessarily encouraging you to destroy your family dynamic, but definitely don't consider a nose job just for the sake of your brothers and, you know, how they're teasing you. First of all, a brother is going to brother. Um, I don't have brothers personally, but I have seen how other people's brothers interact with them. Um, so I wouldn't, you know, go there. But also it just depends, you know. First of all, they have that same beauties in the eye of the beholder. So some people are going to like your nose. You're going to find someone who's really going to love you for you. Your face are going to find you beautiful. Um, and even though it's your insecurity, it may not be something that's going to be a big deal to other people. But then one thing that I thought about when I um, heard this question. So I'm in Maryland now. I used to be a Brooklyn girl. And I'm also natural. And so what I found that when I was in Brooklyn walking through the streets with my fro, my hair natural and everything, I would get a, approached by so many guys. And then when I moved to Maryland, well, first of all, I moved to Maryland for my man. Um, so I wasn't looking for anybody to be approaching me. But I noticed that men here are not really necessarily approaching me like they were in Brooklyn or in New York because of my hair. So it's all about... Um, perception, location, who you're around, who's seeing you, what, you know, it's a lot of factors. But at the end of the day, I definitely wouldn't consider a nose job because your brothers have caused you to have an insecurity about it. So that's just my thing. You're going to do what you're going to do, but I definitely would not do it. Now, Tony, um, Keisha is really, really gorgeous. I've seen Keisha and she's oh, in... Oh that tribe with like Chili and like Ananda Lewis. You remember Ananda Lewis, right? Yes, I do. Keisha's so perfect. Keisha's gorgeous. Like I, I can show you Keisha picture. I'm not, I'll show you off here. But Keisha's really, really pretty. And her brothers really pissed me off because I'm like, well, what noses do they have? Because y'all are related. Right. So I mean, <laughs> how y'all gonna roast you? Know what I'm saying? Like, how y'all mm -hmm. roasting her? Yeah. And the other thing is to Keisha, you know, plastic surgery is very addictive. You know, nose jobs, the lip jobs, the eye jobs, and so on. And, and it, you know, we did this on the panel, um, and Kai said, you have to maintain alterations. Because as soon as you come off of that table, you're taking care of something that you had before, but now it needs more care. So it's like having a baby, but the baby's on your face or some other part of your body. And you know, Tony, too, nose jobs are tricky for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't have the anatomy, 
you can end up looking really crazy. Yes. And I always joke that I say, like, I don't have enough nose to job. So <laughs> like, what am I going to do? But um, here's a rapper, though. And this is all alleged. Popular female rapper. Not going to name her. But she got a nose job because people online were teasing her about looking like a cartoon character from a Nickelodeon show. And I'm not going to say the rapper. I'm not going to say the show. But guys, please stop picking on people. Like, everybody's skin is not good. And right now, on the screen, we have the um, SAMHSA website up, samhsa.gov, S-A-M-H-S-A, um, for mental health resources. But like I said, Keisha, we would never drag you, but we will drag your brothers, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Tony's sweet. Tony not going to drag your brothers. I drag you. But um, Keisha, uh, Kai did say that he still has that bacon, egg, and cheese for you, with your name on it. So it might be a little stale now, but he'll buy you another. But um, thanks for letting us help you twi twice, Keisha. Um, Tony, you know, I was watching Botched. You know Botched on, on E. Yeah, but I've never and, um, watched episode. Oh, you've never watched? Mm-mm. Oh, Tony, it's a, it's but a nightmare. But I've seen like little snips and clip, you know, clips of it. Yeah. And, um, no, no, no. <laughs> it's too, it's, you're too squeamish for it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they did this guy's nose job on there. And he was a smoker. And they told him, if you're, we're going to do this for you, you got to stop smoking, at least during the healing process. Don't you know his nose caved right back in because he started smoking again? What? And the doctor was just like, I'm not helping you anymore. He was just like, I'm done. I'm done. Because, you know, he didn't listen. Yeah. So he was, they were just like, we're done. Um, but we do have an update from Anonymous, um, a.k.a. Eric, who wrote us last time because his father and his brothers were pressuring him to have sex and lose his virginity. Um, and Eric is 18, he's from Pennsylvania. And he writes, Dear Miss Tony and Mr. Chris, this is Eric, anonymous from Talk Like Sex Q&A before audition. Thank you for your advice and thank you for taking my question. Over the Christmas break, I sat down with my dad and brothers and told them I'm not interested in having sex because I have goals I'm trying to accomplish and I want to find it, want to be. I guess he means want to be financially stable. Uh, before I have kids or even catch an STD that I cannot cure. And Tony, this is a smart young boy. Like, good for you, Eric. Good for mm -hmm. you. Right. My dad says they were joking, but my brothers called me smart for at least thinking about my future. They all had kids as teenagers, and my parents had us when they were in their teens, so we all know what it's like to struggle. I forgot to mention last time that my mom isn't in the picture. She's been incarcerated since I was five. So I really don't have a relationship with her. My great grandmother is the only mother figure we had growing up. And since she raised me and my brothers, while my dad was locked up for 10 years as well. So I know how to respect them. Sorry for writing such a long message, but I wanted to let everyone know how things went. And so it was heavy, like, oh my God. Um, but you go before I have a moment. I have the tissues right here. So. No, I was really happy about this update because sometimes, you know, we're afraid to have those conversations with our family because just like in the previous um, commenter about teasing and things like that. And it sounds like his brothers were very mature about it. And I just really love that. So I'm really happy for Eric. And not only that, this is going to plateau him to kind of push forward in his his education and doing the right thing. You're waiting for he for, And so he is um, ready you know, to start a family and have sex, you know, and things like that. So I'm really happy for this update. Yeah. And, and to me, it just, it blows my mind because he's 18. I'm like, I remember what I was doing 18 years ago. <laughs> like, that's 0405. You know, he was born in you know, 506, 506. He was born in 0506. Like, I remember what I was up to. I was on the message board with you guys back then. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not leaving that in there. But, um... If any of you guys out there, 18, like Eric, or however old you are, wear condoms when you do decide to have sex with a young lady. It doesn't matter how healthy she looks or how clean she smells or how much you like her, because she could have something inside of her that could spread to you. And I know some of you are on prep, and that's great. Granted, you could, it could be something that you just need a shot for, but why get a shot if you don't need one? You know, I mean, we, we all get wild in the heat of the moment. So just remember, wrap it up. Mm -hmm. if, you, if anything, 
both of you can get go get tested before you do decide to go that route. And there are plenty of places that do it for free. I mean, Tony, the HIV test is now a finger prick. Like, you know how people do their blood sugar? Yeah. It's a finger prick. A 20-minute test. Mm-hmm. 20 minutes. And um, also, guys, Eric did say that it was okay for us to refer to him by his real name. And you know what else, Tony? This is a fun fact about Eric. He came up with the name Coach Tony. So he did. <laughs> he, he wrote it in the email. So we got to <laughs> give him his props for that. For real. Okay, shout so, out to you, Eric. Yes. <laughs> 18 years old. Came up with the... Helping, putting them, helping out the show. Eric, you want to be my <laughs> intern? I need an intern over here. But no, um, right. send the show your mailing address, Eric, and we're going to send you something. Because, I mean, yeah. I got to give him his props for that. Yes. That, yeah. 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 All right, Tony, here we go. Here we go with this one. Anonymous is 33 and she's from the district. That's Washington, D.C., if you don't know. Um, anonymous, uh, you know the anonymous, let me get some mumble sauce. Why you, you know, because I'm going to need some mumble sauce after this. All right. Anyway, Coach Tony's about to beat me with the bag. Because I'm, yeah, let me get, let me get in order. I'm about to beat somebody else with the bag. Anyway, okay, I'm done. Chris, focus, focus, focus. This is the second time I've been to the ER after having sex with my boyfriend. Well, he's not really my boyfriend. We're just FWBs. But anyway, I think he's too big. When we went to the hospital, he got on live and was bragging about why we were there. You know, on, like on live though, uh, anonymous. Like, you know, he sounds like he uses Irish Spring and Aquafresh. Like, just, I can't, I really, I'm, I, I can't. Like, he eat Popeyes and Casamigos for breakfast. Like, just a real hood figure tone. Like, I just, anyway, <laughs> the second time he actually used We Dad instead of Lou because it was all I had. Wait a minute. He put that in. I remember my gyno telling me that I run on the smaller side. Don't get me wrong, the sex feels good, but my doctor told me if I keep tipping my cervix, I may not be able to have children. What should I do? And Tony, I really want to deck him for his antics. Right. And I want you to deck her for using wee dag and up a boom. For sure. Okay? For sure. It's expensive. Yes. <laughs> Now, with this one, first, without knowing how detailed the conversation was with the gynecologist, I would suggest speaking with maybe another one. So um, you can walk through having sex comfortably and healthy um, going forward because Anonymous is only 33. So you have way more years of intimacy. Um, But I do want to talk to you about a product that I sell called Horizons. So insert picture here. Um, Horizons are vaginal dilators. So, of course, we're going to put the picture up so that you can see how they look. Um, Vaginal dilators are gradual devices that help expand um, the pelvic floor. And so it's going to, over time, make it more easy and comfortable for you. So it's preparing you for anything, for a tampon, for a penis, a toy, a gynecological exam. It's slowly opening up. So it's like they're gradual. Um, And they can help you begin or resume vaginal penetration. So they come in a set and it's it's multiple sizes. So you're going to start off with a really small one. And then you basically expand up to the next size once you're comfortable. Um, So once you work your way up, it's going to be, you know, easier for you to take on whatever size of whatever thing that's going into your vagina. Um, But I do think you should definitely speak more with a healthcare provider. Because they they may also recommend dilator therapy as well, but that's something that I would highly recommend that you look into because it sounds like especially if you are um, if you're too tight, um, of course relaxation and a good lube as well. But I think dilators are probably going to be what you do need to get or start off with to just make it more comfortable and ease you into various uh, sizes of things going into your vagina. I have no idea they even made those for mm-hmm. the public to consume. Yeah. Because that was something that I was aware that existed as more of a medical device, but I didn't know that that was something that you could actually purchase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and see, a lot of people have 
conception with bedroom candy and our websites and the products that we sell um, we're a lifestyle company so we're not just toys we are health and intimacy sexual health and intimacy and wellness um so this even though it may be in the category like if you went to the website it's going to be in the category under toys it's actually not a toy it's a, a wellness product so um yeah, I would definitely recommend if some, someone is having that type of issue, they look into dilators. You know, you know, Tony, you know, you know, I couldn't help myself. Anonymous needs to trade places with Kelly. Remember Kelly? You know, put a tag in my tank, Kelly, from uh, last show. Yes. No I do. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you know, Tony, you know, it all goes back to music with me. Kelly reminded me of this house record that I. And it's called Gonna Get Back to You. It's by Masters at Work. And you guys, you househeads know that. But it's like in the, in the song, she's, she's saying, Oh, big, thick, and healthy now. Oh, big, thick, and healthy now. But anyway, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a mess, Tony. You gotta hear that, that record. It, it's a trip. Yeah. But seriously, she has to be careful. Like, she could really put herself at risk for something serious. Like, I heard um, a story about a young lady who ended up, she was in a similar situation mm -hmm. and she ended up needing to get a DMC. Um, mm. You know, I, you guys, below I put down what DMC actually is. I'm not going to go into detail. But you know, Anonymous, here's my thing. I want you to bring your man in here for a second. Just just for a moment, I want to talk to him. And, if, and he's not it's, even it's, her man, just a friend with benefits. Oh, words. Bring him here. Now, I'm going to need to burn my sage and follow Santo for this. I demanded the branch manager call my husband immediately on the speakerphone. He was hesitant in his speech at first, but then he admitted that they were subscriptions for X-rated adult content. The hits keep coming at the Chris David show. Okay, is he here? All right, I'll wait. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Chris David. This is... Post. Mrs. Tony Drumright Antoine, a right, clinical certified sexuality coach. And this is the Talk Like Sex QA Spring Summer Edition on the Chris David Show. Now, I'm going to share something with you, and I need you to open up your notes app on your phone or record this or whatever you need to do to remember what I'm about to tell you. All right. So, listen, vaginal sex is not comfortable for every vagina. And you are legitimately hurting them. And I don't know if you're doing it intentionally or if you genuinely just like don't realize how deep you're going, but let's just say you don't realize how deep you're going. So this is what you need to do. Now I'm going to do just lean in just a little bit. Lean in. When you're in the heat of the moment, I want you to try to get yourself down to maybe 20 to 25 percent of your normal erection. This way you're still erect. But you're not nearly as erect as you are as erect as you are when you're hurting. And this is going to require you to think. So I want you to use your brain. You understand? Because sex is all in your mind. You got to be there mentally to have it and have it good. Or how about this? How about not going as deep or not going deep at all unless you ask you to? Because we did a whole segment on mood, and it's up at the ChrisDavidShow.com. Weather is better, but not that kind of wet. Okay, don't compromise your comfort. And you know, Tony, I just, I really want people for 2024, because we're like, we're halfway done with the year. Can we let the FWB thing die in 2024? Right. Like, seriously. For sure. I mean, it never works, it, Tony, it never works out. There's always another one and another one and another one, mm -hmm. and then everybody ends up with their feelings hurt. Because they never establish boundaries or they or they end up in someone's clinic, you know, mad at the world because they haven't healed from trauma and right. they're out here lusting and busting and using sex to self soothe Right. But, and basically at 33 years old, you're wasting your pretty. You know? Like you don't is, get it back. Right. Life is way too short. Mm-hmm. But you you know what I'm saying, Tony, though. And then the multiples got multiples. And then right. the multiples, multiples got multiples. And then those multiples got multiples. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and you know, when I first saw FWB, Tony, I was confused because <laughs> I thought it meant, wait, did you know I can't help myself? You need to learn your acronyms. We need to put together a list oh, of what's wrong with me? I thought it meant fucking with buddies. 
But I mean, Tony, I guess it does, right? Like, it for, yeah, does. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> I know, Tony, I gotta, I, I, I need a refresher course in, in these acronyms because I didn't know what LML was. I thought it was this, like LML. I, I thought FWB was something. You, you know what, Tony, you know what it reminds me of FWB? Remember Words with Friends? Yes. Right? <laughs> it's, it's like oh they out here collecting FWBs like letters <laughs> on uh, Words with Friends. Oh, by the way, um, Coach Tony's Bedroom Candy Store over at bkparties.com slash 6109 has every lube imaginable. Please do not use hair gel as a substitute for lube, especially not no $25 hair gel. Yes. Tony, I'm surprised they didn't get stuck. Right. And I've never used We Dad, but what? It's really good. <sighs> So not as lube though. Come on. No. <laughs> oh, it's good because you know I use it in my hair, and I only found out about it because of this letter. <laughs> so thank you, anonymous. But it's it's um it has like a humidity protector in it. Ah, okay. So it's good for our texture, but yeah, um, I don't know. But anyway, this is not a hair show. I'm sorry. I just had a moment. I had to, you know. Um, this is my friend I had to put her on. But <laughs> just listen, be careful, Anonymous, because your buddy gives me very, very bad vibes. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm sorry. It might be time to bless and release, as Coach yeah. Tony says. Yeah. And, and then also, try to incorporate a silicone lube. So, you know, we have a lot of different types of lube. You know, these days there's a lube for every scenario. Silicone lubes are really good for marathon sessions, for water play. but And it's a little bit thicker than like a water-based lube. So water-based lube, we have one that's a natural, so it mimics your regular body uh, lubrication. But maybe a silicone lube would also kind of help you be a little more comfortable as well. So that's just a suggestion. Um, I definitely would still have that conversation with uh, a medical provider who's going to be comfortable going into detail with you about a plan. Um, but yeah, that could also um, be something that would help as well. Um, you know, Tony, I took it out of a letter, but she was saying how he got on the live talking about um, quote, the BBC got another one. I just, I mean, and, yeah. and you know, I'm gonna lean in real quick on my brothers. Like, please stop referring to your penises as BBCs because the racial connotations are just deep and oppressive. And collectively, we're greater than that. But just, just wow. And, and you know, another thing, you guys gotta realize that holes are tight in real life. Like those people in porn are on drugs and they will hand through. Mm -hmm. In real life, like there's a little bit of a struggle, especially when your partner isn't relaxed or you're using the wrong thing for me. And I don't know, Tony, I, this one really bothered me because she's 33. I'm assuming that he's close in age too, but he's yeah. just so immature. And it just, it, you know, I don't think he likes her. I mean, it's it's like he's hate fucking her. And that's for anybody else out there who's dealing with this. Like, I really, I hope that you guys, I, I hope she learns her value. And I hope, yeah. you know, thanks for writing. Really. Yeah, he could like the availability of her, you know, because they're friends with benefits. So there's no, um, there's no obligation to see each other every day, but when she does get that phone call, maybe, you know, she's compromised from sacrificing anything. So just take the phone call and be with him. Who knows? But yeah, I would bless and release. Definitely. Definitely. And you know, Tony, too, even whether it's FWB friends with benefit or, you know, a boyfriend or, or even some people are in relationships, like committed relationships. Mm -hmm. A lot of these guys I'm starting to notice, like they hate the women that they're getting involved with. Yeah. Like they're out here purposely infecting them with STDs, trying to harm their insides, purposely, you know, trying to get them pregnant, poking holes in condoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of that. And, and women are doing it too, because I, I think I was telling you earlier about a letter that, that we got. I was going to tell you about um, this guy said his girlfriend 
is getting violent with him during sex. And I'm just like, yeah. So we'll, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna send that to you. We'll, yeah, because you, Tony, that's like your summer reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm gonna send, I'm gonna send that to you because I'm just like, you know, we get a lot of these in, but then it's but some of them are just so similar. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to find what is different and what. And yeah, I wasn't prepared for that. It's like I gotta really be careful what I manifest because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I get stuff I'm not ready to. But you know, it takes me back though to the first time, the very first show that you and I did. And we, remember, we talked about the red flags. We were talking about dating and, and red and green flags. And I have my window up to, just to get the light in because it was very dreary earlier. And something happened before you even came on when, when we were texting. And there was this guy outside, probably for like 10, 15 minutes. And he's just honking his horn. And I'm like, who just does that? Like, you know, if you don't just text the person or pull over, because he was literally just out in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. So, so you know I'm nosy. You know I'm nosy. <laughs> so I go to the window. I opened the window all the way up. And I wanted to see, you know, who he was out there for. So there's this family on the block. And I called them, you know, Mel Kwan and them. Because Mel Kwan is the name that shows up on my Wi-Fi. And I know mm -hmm. that's their house. And they're the only other black family, you know, on the block. So I'm like, it's got to be somebody for the Melquans, you know. And I mean, they were <laughs> deep Tony. It's like they have three houses in this development. Mm -hmm. And it's about 10 of them. And I'm like, you know, listen, props for black home ownership. But it's like, the people it's like so the girl comes out and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the sister. And the guy in the car, he looks pissed off. He, he's like, um, just... I, he's saying something to her. I really couldn't hear or see you know, what he was saying. But she gets in the car and Tony, before he could even put his clothes, before he could even, she could even put her foot in the car, he speeds off and her foot is hanging like outside the car. And he's and she's laughing about it. And I'm, I don't know. Like some of you, and she's young, Tony. She's, she can't yeah. be, she's not over 21. She's a young girl. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like she's out of high school, but not quite 21 yet. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, some of you guys need to just leave. You need to free yourselves and bless and release. That's what <laughs> Tony says. But yeah. anyway, so next up, we, oh wait, Tony, um, are there any bedroom candy sales coming up? Uh, we do have every Wednesday a hump day sale. And so we find out what the item is the night before. And what I've been doing is actually putting the link in my uh, Instagram stories. So my Instagram page is bedroom candy underscore by Tony, T-O-N-I. And on Wednesdays at any point, usually I'll post it after around 10, 11 a.m. Um, and I will already have what the item is. It's going to be 50% off. And I'll have the link that you can just click on and go directly to my site to place the order. There's been things that's like a hundred and something dollars and they'll put on sale for 50% off. So definitely check my stories on Wednesdays and you'll get to see what that item is that particular week. Nominus is 25 and she's from the Bronx. She's, she writes, I like getting facials, massages, and pedicures on a regular basis. I found a salon in the city that caters to couples but the massage therapists are all men. There's this one and his name is Stanley and he's overbooked every time I go and I can see why. He's not really, he's not very tall, but his muscles got muscles and his thing be poking through the scrubs. All right, listen, Anonymous. Okay, did you hear my alarm just chime? Did you hear that noise? Because it, Tony, it's so crazy. That, that happens whenever I'm about to say something or I've said something that, you know, the universe agrees with. So all I'm gonna say is this, don't be like Rachel Soror was. Remember Rachel from mm -hmm. season? Yeah. Be like her. All right. It says he's really not that cute in the face. He's like an alligator with muscles and a, and a big you-know-what. But he's good at what he does, and I don't have a problem with it, but my boyfriend is apprehensive and said he feels uncomfortable letting some big muscular man rub him down while he's half naked. How can I convince my man to up his self-care regimen with me? 
And you know, Tony, we did this on the men's panel. And Kai, Kai just always has something. Both of them do, Kai and Joey. But Kai was like, what's she checking for? Describing the song, the score like that. <laughs> it's like, like the song really long, big, big, and up in that. Long, big, big, and up in that. So, Anonymous, in this case, I'm going to have to start with you, man. Um, when it comes to being touched, whether intimately or what's perceived as intimate, people have their comfort levels. Um, and I would never push that on somebody without making them feel uncomfortable when it comes to physical touch. Like for me personally, I don't have an issue with men overall. However, I don't want a man giving me a massage. I don't want a male gynecologist. It's just preference. Um, so I would never in a million years just straight out the gates, you know, if your man isn't um, doing things for self-care, I wouldn't let step one be get a massage by a man. You got to ease him into self-care. And there's a lot more things that you can do. So that, it, you know, it doesn't mean he can't do other things. Start off with a facial. You know, how about that? Or a pedicure, you know, I see men in the nail salon all the time when I used to get my nails done who would um, get pedicures or manicures. You can start there, um, you know, do something small, but asking him to get a massage from a man um, as a form of self-care when it's not really his thing is insane. <laughs> so definitely start small. Um, and this isn't even something where I would have to have a conversation with him about or kind of um, do things to gauge him or gradually ease him into the idea of getting a massage with a man. It's just not going to be a, a, a negotiable. And that's not something that would make an issue or a big deal out of. It's just his preference. Um, touch is really intimate for a lot of people and it's very stimulating. So for you to kind of want to force that, um, I think that is a little wrong, um, but I would definitely start off with you know the nail salon or a facial um people's face you know that's their billboard so who doesn't want a nice clean skin um who doesn't want to be exfoliated to get advice on what items to use on their skin so i definitely would start there first um but the massage with a man i definitely wouldn't push that um on our uh, segment of uh, Ask the Guys, they said, what you said, Tony, this is something she'll have to probably ease him into because of, you know, due to his comfortability, because not all men are comfortable being touched. And some are very old school with their hygiene practices. And um, like I mentioned to you on that episode to Anonymous, you could try giving him a massage yourself mm -hmm. to at least get him comfortable with it. Um, but thanks for writing in. And you know, uh, Coach Tony's bedroom candy store might be of some assistance because they have something called Sugar Daddy that can be used in lieu of all of those body deodorants that are out now or all mm -hmm. over to be. And there's also another thing that you might like too, and it's called Keep Lighting My Fire. Now, Tony, can you explain Keep Lighting My Fire to them? Yeah, so it's like my fire. Um, so oh, I'm like sorry. Fire. <laughs> no worries. And we'll put a picture up. Um, I actually have, uh, well, it's not reachable. So I'll talk about them both. But Light My Fire is uh, a massage candle. So it starts off as a regular candle. It's soy based. So when you burn it and pour it onto the skin, it uh, melts into a massage oil. Um, so that's something that would not only help with intimacy, but you could do the massage yourself. And if you, um, his name is Stanley, um, you know, if you've gotten this massage from Stanley before and you can attest to his moves and what he does, then hopefully you've learned some tips and techniques from the things that Stanley does. And so you can practice those things on your man. So that would not only be giving him his self-care, but it's also increasing intimacy between the two of you as well. Um, another thing that Chris mentioned for self-care was sugar daddy. So Sugar Daddy is an intimate elixir. Um, we have two versions. So the woman's version is called Hot Cakes, H-A-U-T-E. Sugar Daddy is because we like to keep the men inclusive. Um, so the reason that Hot Cakes, which was the first product, came into existence is because the creator of that, she kept getting infections in her intimate areas, yeast infections, bacterial infections. And so when she would get things, um, you know, prescriptions or treatments from her doctor, it wasn't working. So her partner is a chemist. So they both got into the lab, created this product. 
The products are all uh, natural and vegan. And so the main component is coconut oil. Hopefully he's not allergic to coconut oil, but they come together to smell like cake. So who doesn't want their intimate uh, parts smelling like cake, right? And so because we like to keep the men inclusive, we have the male version, which is called Sugar Daddy. And Sugar Daddy smells like a lemon pound cake. So it's a lemony scent. Um, it smells really intoxicating and men and women can use it, but it has antimicrobial and antibacterial properties in it. So he doesn't have to necessarily have anything going on, any issues, but who doesn't want to smell like the cake, um, you know, cake. And so you basically, it's in a dropper bottle. You will put a couple drops on your hand, rub it in and put it on whatever part of your body um, would be susceptible to sweating. Um, so that's something that you can also give him to up his self-care routine. So it doesn't necessarily have to be those traditional things like carrying him to a massage parlor, is that what they call them? Or a spa to be massaged by a man. Um, you know, like we mentioned earlier, you can give him that massage. And then you can also introduce him to products that are geared towards self-care as well. And I guarantee you, once you elevate a man's self-care and introduce him to a more higher quality item, like a, a, a nice expensive or fancier body scrub or body wash, believe me, they're going to be hooked. Um, so that's something that you can definitely do. Also, another thing that I would suggest in the event that Light My Fire is not available when you do go to the website, we have a candle called Unwind. So Unwind is our CBD collection. And if you're not familiar with CBD, think marijuana without the THC. So THC is a component that gets you high, but CBD is the component that aids in relaxation, anxiety, um, pain management. And so um, that is another candle that I would definitely recommend because not only are you giving that massage, but it's kind of doing some of the work for you because it's helping your partner to relax. So um, that's definitely an alternative to the Light My Fire candle. I'm not opposed to a male masseur as long as he stays above billionaires row. All right, Tony, 57th Street. All right. right. <laughs> All right. As long as you stay above 57th Street, you're cool. Like I said before, you go to Fort Lee, you go to Jersey City. <laughs> You go to Brooklyn. I don't care. Just stay above 57th Street. Uh, but Tony, are you ready for this next one? Yes. Now, I'm going to need to burn my sage and Palo Santo for this. Exactly. Don't bother. Hello, Chris and Dr. Tony. My name's Rose. I'm 57 years old, and I've been married for 33 years. Together for 39, well, 40 at this point. Um, to my husband, Arnold, we have three children and eight grandchildren, and we live in a small town north of Dallas. My husband is retired military, and I'm retiring this year from working for the federal government since I was 19. Congratulations. I love my husband dearly, but I recently discovered something very disturbing about him after receiving multiple phone calls and emails from our local credit union. They asked me to come into the branch due to suspected fraudulent charges that were made on our joint checking account. When I entered the branch, everyone was looking at me as if they were in on some joke that had not been revealed to me. The branch manager quickly approached me and escorted me to a room where he had an open laptop and a manila folder with mine and my husband's name on it. Now, manila folders for you guys who are very young, they are brown folder. I don't think, I don't know, do I have one in here? No, they were a brown folder with holes in it. So just Google Manila, Manila like uh, the Philippines, Manila folder. Anyway, because I, I know Tony, we got the young people and they're like, huh, what's that? What's a Manila folder? All right. He was polite and kind in addressing me and asked if I was familiar with the charges that were being made on our account. I told him that none of them looked familiar to me, but what caught my eye weren't the charges, it was that our account, which had a monthly running balance of $200,000, get the take, was now holding less than $3.75. I saw red and could not even focus on what the branch manager was saying to me. I screamed at the top of my lungs, I'm going to kill him. I never felt so hurt in trading. I demanded the branch manager call my husband immediately on the speakerphone and I asked him what these charges were for. He was hesitant in his speech at first, 
But then he admitted that they were subscriptions for X-rated adult content. The branch manager and I sat in that dank, cold office for four hours going over each and every charge. In the end, it was revealed that my husband had racked up close to $177,000 in subscription charges to thousands of OnlyFans performers in less than six months. The branch manager told me that I had two options. The first was to fill out a form stating that the charges were fraudulent and that I had no knowledge that they were being made, but this option would cause my husband to be liable for the restitution and possibly lead us to divorce. My second option would be to dispute the charges that exceeded one month, block future subscription charges from OnlyFans, and possibly never get all of our hard-earned money back. I am at an impasse. My husband acts as if nothing ever happened, and I have only shared this with the bank, my sister, my attorney, and Alfie. What do you recommend? Sincerely, Rose. Mes me people. <laughs> <laughs> divorce that's what I recommend <laughs> I recommend divorce they have it for a reason this seems to be a valid one divorce um, you know just in hearing that retired military being uh, a federal government employee for what roughly 38 years and about to retire if you can even retire now at this point um and the money is now gone like you know some people need that sense of security and it's like they both worked so hard for so many years and and rose is uh 57 so these are, you know, the years that they should be, you know, she's about to retire. They should be traveling the world and, and be, you know, problem and drama and stress free. And now the money is gone. Um, so I for sure, like at this point, you know, what is she expected to do now? Not retire and, you know, maybe even get a part time job to help, you know, recoup some of that or make it comfortable for them to be able to retire. Um, if I have to do all that and sacrifice some of retirement, I'm going to do it by myself. So, you know, I know the goal is never going to be to, you know, shatter your your household or your family dynamic. Um, but this is definitely a, re a reason. And it's basically, you know, a serious violation of trust, you know, um, because he basically took retirement off the table and living comfortably and having security. He took that off the table and he didn't consider so many variables. Um, I personally would never be able to trust him again. Uh, I wouldn't even be able to trust him to go to the grocery store with a list. Um, so for sure, my opinion, this is, Done. I mean, divorce is, is imminent. I mean, but I, Tony, I'm legit speechless. And I never speechless. Yeah. But I will <laughs> say this, though. This may be an upside. I know that the government, the federal government, has something called Thrift Savings Plan. And that's similar to a 401k. Like for us mm -hmm. non government working people, we have a 401k. Um, government working people have something called a thrift savings plan. Um, okay. Hopefully, if she's had a thrift savings plan since she was 19, she has probably even more money in that mm -hmm. than what he wants. Yeah. Right. Let's hope. I hope so. That you're I hope absolutely so. right. Yeah. Especially 30 years yeah. she's been working there. Yeah, it should be a nice stack of change. So let's saying. hope. I that, hope so too. Uh, yeah. Please accept our sincerest apologies because we got your email here at the show last season, but I didn't get to it in time to put it on that. So I hope we were able to help you today. But please write us and let us know how everything is going. And that goes for everyone who's written, written in too. Don't be a stranger. Info at the Chris David Show .com. I sincerely hope everything works out for you, Rose. A blessing release. All right. Um, and I'm great. Tony, I love that she called you Dr. Tony. Right. Oh, oh manifestation. Okay. I know. From her it. fingertips to God's ears. <laughs> yes. Yes, I missed that. I <laughs> Dr. Tony, she called you. Oh, the manifestation is real. Yes, Rose. Yes. Like, in, to the universe. <laughs> exactly. Listen, but she's going to need my time machine. Her and Anonymous with those ER visits. Yes. And, and you know, Tony, something else. OnlyFans is really going to be the ruination of society. 
It really is. Because That's someone else, I got another letter, and I can't wait to, to see you rip this apart because I know you're gonna really, you're gonna really <laughs> beat beat them good. Um, I got another last week in in my email. This girl said she uh, her man's doing porn in the living room. What? <laughs> What? This is where you put that sound bite exactly. <laughs> that you normally <laughs> exactly. Yes, I tell you, the hits, the hits keep coming. The hits keep coming at the Chris Davis what? show. Yeah. Oh my exactly. gosh! Wow. In the lip. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, get that Tony. One. I listen. Summer reading. We're going to call it the summer reading. Yeah. But thanks, Rose, and best of luck to you. And this, mm -hmm. uh, this, yeah. This, okay. So this next one, let me, okay. So this next one was also featured on the men's panel and it comes from Fiona. Fiona's 26 and she's from Charleston, South Carolina. Fiona writes, how come every guy I get with watches porn? I don't want to be with a man who watches porn. It's so unhealthy to me. And Tony, she has a vomit emoji in this email. And also she spelled porn P-R-O-N, and I just could not bring myself to leave it like that. She's 26. <laughs> oh, Fiona. Uh, so, I mean, Fiona, why? Like, because this didn't give, like, a lot of this. I'm really curious to, like, get into Fiona's head and, you know, just have a dialogue about this. Because what makes it unhealthy? You know, I'm wondering, does it affect his day-to-day -day habits? Um, have you had a conversation about it? Because it could be something where he doesn't even know how you feel. Um, but I would definitely talk to him before making judgments because maybe he just enjoys it and for no other reason at all. But just find out why. And then you could also probably meet in the middle. So if he has like an unhealthy amount of times so that he watches it during the day, maybe he can minimize that. But also maybe you can just, you know, have a conversation and watch it with them and you can have couple time or it can be, you know, part of foreplay. Um, but it's just not one of those blanket things where I hate it, it's unhealthy. And then you, you know, have that right to go on and have him not watch it anymore. Um, so this definitely warrants a conversation and not saying that you're closed minded, but just basically, um, Based on the sentence or the statement that you just made, just kind of opening up your mind to understand why it is that he's watching it, what he's getting out of it, and what you can get out of it if you started to watch it. So not sure if you've ever seen him before, but there's so many different types. Um, but maybe you can like maybe watch something with him. And like I said, that could be part of foreplay. Um, but yeah, what do you think, Chris? Oh, I'll talk. <laughs> Oh, Fiona, Fiona, the cinnamon apple of my eye. <laughs> Thank goodness for Coach Tony. She the just buffer. Gave me, what'd you say? The buffer. <laughs> yes, the, buff, the buffer, the strengthener, <laughs> because she gave you a wealth of information. I think what you said was very insightful because she could use it as a tool. It doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. have to be something that's bad. It could be a tool for them to spice things up but fiona i hope you do find what I, I hope you find what you desire and what you deserve and that's we just want to leave it at that um we have another and fiona, just, oh, I'm sorry. Add, just to add one yes. thing fiona you have to define why you feel that it's unhealthy what's your definition of unhealthy like there's so many there's just a parameter around the word unhealthy when it comes to it that I just really um, would like for you to kind of dig a little deeper within just to kind of figure out why you think it's unhealthy and what specifically is making it unhealthy for you or for your man. Yeah, I mean, and also what this, I'm wondering if, if, if there's something that happened in the past, did she see something mm -hmm. or I, no, I don't know, it's so deep and I really wish that sometimes yeah. They would give a little more detail, um, right? You know, but that's why we have our coach Tony here because she can work it all out um, <laughs> for for you guys. Work it all out this lifetime. Um, we have another. We have another update. This one comes from uh, Terrence. Uh, Terrence is twenty eight. He's from Philly. Uh, he wrote into the show because he had a foot fetish and he didn't want to tell his wife because he thought she might leave him. 
And he was very brief with us. He just says, hey, this is Terrence writing me back. Thank you. I took your advice and now I massage my wife's feet. She really appreciates it. And I do too. There you go. <laughs> Sometimes people think the smallest things are going to have like the biggest ramifications. And in this case, all it took was communication. So win-win. She's getting a massage after a hard day's work and you are fulfilling your fetish fantasies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and might I add, you know, go to bedroom candy. Maybe you could get some of those nice smelling uh, hot cakes or, 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 you know, sugar daddy or whatever. You could rub that on it. You know what? We actually have a brand new um, product called Foot Fetish, and it's a little bundle, and it's a, a foot cream, a foot scrub, and a little brush. So, <laughs> there <Hey>. you go. <laughs> it's called Foot Fetish, yes. All right. It's up there on, uh, on your screen. See? That's, that's excellent. I love when we get updates like that. Thanks for writing back. Our next update comes from Casey. She's 21. And remember, Casey wanted advice on getting a BBL on credit. Now, what you guys don't know was me and Coach Tony both bet that Casey was probably going to go get the BBL. Did she get the BBL? I need a drum roll sound effect. <laughs> yeah, dun, dun, dun. Okay, exactly. <laughs> All right, so it says, it says, I'm not getting a BBL because the doctors keep telling me I don't have enough fat to graft. Tony, this is exactly what I said, what I told you. Mm -hmm. I did find a doctor, however, who was in New York and does these shots that make it look like I have a better projection. I did one session, but they're expensive, and I would need to go for multiple rounds of shots just to get the look out of it. I really don't want something that's going to be rebroke. And the doctor said, I'll need at least five more sessions. Let me tell you something real quick, Casey. They always say you need six sessions. Always, for everything. I remember when I wanted to get laser hair removal, like from under here, the doctor's like, oh, you're going to need six sessions. It's going to be $2,500. I'm like, for each session or for the, you know, for the six? And, you know, she said for the six. But the, the, the thing was, Tony, the machine wouldn't have worked on my skin. It's for white people with dark hair. So it wouldn't have worked on me. I would have wasted my money. But um, anyway, oh, and my boyfriend watched with me and he said he can handle a girl with a big booty. I broke up with him and guess what, y'all? He got a girl with a big booty, but she dumped his ass. Ha ha. <laughs> she really wrote ha ha to him. Now he's been hitting me on Snap singing Baby, baby, please, and talking about how I changed on him. Anyway, thank you for taking my message. And Casey, thank you for writing us. All right, Tony, let's talk about BBL Casey. Best BBL in history. <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad this worked out. It may not have been, uh, it may not have worked out in the conventional way that you wished. Um, but I think it worked out because number one, you know, 21 is just too young to get a BBL and people's bodies change so drastically. So who knows, two, three years from now, you might have, uh, you know, the body that you want. Um, so I'm glad it did work out for you in that way. Um, and then this is just kind of like a a lesson or a reminder to just be grateful with what you have because who knows how much money you would have lost um just in doing you know like you said you did one procedure already but I i'm just i'm glad it worked out for you i'm glad you didn't go under the knife and get the bbl so yeah. so there was this girl i saw over the pandemic at this um place called sabrina's it's down in pa and she had to be about 95 pounds soaking wet but her behind was enormous. Like she literally, <laughs> I'm gonna show you, she literally looked like this. She literally looked like this. <laughs> but she was, she was itty bitty. Like she was very, very, very yeah. small. And so I was with one of my own girls. She turns around and she's like, how the hell they do that? Where'd she go? They ain't have enough BBL, BB for them to no. <laughs> but I think she might have had like the, the silicone shots or maybe an implant, this girl. Yeah. But um, yeah. Casey, we're glad that you kind of listened to us. Kind of. Mm -hmm. 
And I right. hope that you continue to work on, like I said before, BBLing your personality and growing into a beautiful, well-rounded young lady. And Tony, she said he, he hit up with the crawl top as the baby, baby, please. <laughs> 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 but she had me on edge, though. I really thought she was going to do it. And, mm-hmm. and like you said, when your mind is made up to do something, you're going to do it. But right. I'm, I'm glad yeah. she had to change your heart. And again, if, if anything comes maintenance, some of these people aren't even washing properly after getting these people. Mm-hmm. And you know, Casey, I normally, like, I, I don't know, I'm in rare form today. I normally don't do stuff like this, but your boyfriend is goofy. Like, I mean, I'm sorry, your ex-boyfriend. He's the ex. He's the ex-boyfriend. And Casey's pretty. You know that singer Coco Jones? Yeah. That's who she looks like. Okay. She looks like Coco Coco Jones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, if your man is liking pics, go do the same. Like on uh, Stefan (laughs) Diggs and Miles Garrett's pics. I mean, you know? And and the the boyfriend, I'm telling you, the ex-boyfriend. He looked like every light skinned dude who goes to the gym. Like he had this little broccoli <laughs> haircut and everything. He's, he, and he's trying to like show off. He had these little bargain basement, little dock off Calvin Klein box of briefs. I'm not going to go in. Because he's only like 22. Like he's not mighty cool. I'm not going to go in on that. Really but to Casey <laughs> and anyone else who may be going through something similar, if someone doesn't like you the way they are, they don't like you. And that's just me. You know, thicker than a slipper, thicker than a ninja. <laughs> I had to, I had to, I had to. What did they say? These jams deserve a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, next, we have uh, an update from Will. Will's uh, 57 and he's from California. And Will wrote in on uh, the last episode of, of our uh, sex coach uh, that his medication caused him to have prolonged ejaculation. Will writes, hello, Chris and Coach Tony. This is Will from California. Thanks for your advice. I'm doing much better. I found a new PCP who switched my medication, and now I'm back to normal. I also looked into the medication you suggested, Chris, but I wasn't able to get my hands on it. I'm seeing a doctor who specializes in male reproductive health, and he has prescribed something similar for me that has helped my levels tremendously. I like that. So sometimes all it takes is finding like a, a professional who is either certified to work with that specific um, issue that you may be having or someone who not necessarily is specialized, but just who's going to go the extra step um, to help, you know, get you where you need to be, a, um, help solve whatever problem it is that you're having. Um, so I'm really glad that he did find another primary care physician. And yeah, I'm glad that it's working out. Yeah. And Will, um, thanks for writing in from your AOL email address. Tell me, Will has an Don't not AOL. Excuse me. No, but mine, I have two, but one is my professional and one yeah. is like a really old one because it's so hard to like transition emails. I have like a ton of email addresses, but two of them are AOL. So Tony, <laughs> don't go too hard on money well. one day, I'm telling you. <laughs> I think I might still have one too. I think I do oh, actually have yeah. it could be worth money one day with these AOL <laughs> email addresses. I'm telling you. Just like you know two one two phone numbers because people joke with me because I right? have two one two phone numbers. And like how did you get a two one two like I've had it since I was like 13. <laughs> <laughs> it's a page number. But um wow, maybe if if Will if, if they ever become worth money, you know, Will can take that some of that money, give that to Rose. So she got you know a little change. Take back that only I mean listen, look at me over here. I'm shipping them. I'm shipping Rose and Will. They around the same age. You know what I mean? Right. I'm shipping right. it because you know Rose ain't staying with her husband, I'm telling you now. Yeah. She ain't, she, sure. ain't she ain't doing that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, he paid back that only fans addiction debt that our husband wrapped up. Um, anyway, thanks, Will. Now, all right. Tony, this next update here had my head spinning. Okay. Okay. 
And this is from a nominee. She's 54. She's from Ohio. She wrote in because her husband was having D. And Coach Tony blessed her with a ton of solutions. I mean, we got like a whole menu with, with that. So it says, hello, YouTube. Thanks so much for taking me last time. We took the advice that was intended for Will, the other caller, as well as what you said about different foods. See, look at that. People are listening. Mm -hmm. My husband mm -hmm. has been taking the fertility pills. Needless to say, Christmas and New Year's was very interesting. And a few weeks ago, I found out I was pregnant. Now, I'm 54. And happy belated, too. And, and mind you, now, this was actually months ago that she found out because she wrote us back back in like February. So she's probably showing at this point. Um, but she says, I'm 54 uh, with two grown kids, three out of five grown grandchildren. So a baby is the last thing I was thinking of, but I will accept the blessing and I'm doing the fall yet. So she's definitely showing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, am, I am sending the two of you a baby shower invitation. Me. I love how refreshing and unique well, this show so. is. Thank you. Please continue <laughs> sharing your knowledge with the people. Thanks for your help. Listen. So yes, you might as well go ahead because I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Wow. So first of all, I'm glad the solutions worked out. Um, and if you're happy, we're happy. <laughs> so congratulations on the new uh, the new addition to the family. Um, so, yeah, I guess, you know, it really does um, make a difference in like the foods and, you know, the things that, um, you know, professionals, those types of um, solutions that they give. Um, but, yeah, this is definitely a shocker. <laughs> so a certain someone was over my shoulder and he goes, well, I wonder how many babies she's having because you know with those fertility drugs, people get, mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah. Oh, so okay. there's a possibility that she could end up having more than just, could you imagine at 54 years old, you about to have, about no, to I drop cannot. some babies. <laughs> no, I cannot and I will not. <laughs> I will not imagine that. Poppy, <laughs> I mean, because you know we just had the. Could you imagine if we were like fertile like that? And we just... <laughs> hey, Poppy's in the other room, and they are driving me uh, insane. So yeah, no. <laughs> wow. No, I'm uh -huh. speechless. This is twice in one episode. Like this is a record. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> speechless. <laughs> anyway, anonymous. Congratulations. I know the new baby is going to be surrounded by lots of love from all of you. For sure. I mean, because it's a lot of them, you know. And, mm -hmm. and thanks, thanks, Anonymous. And congratulations again. I mean, loads of surprises this episode. Seriously. I mean, Manel yes. Tony, how much should I charge for renting out <laughs> my time machine? I mean, like what, like a hundred thousand, maybe, maybe two, two fifty. I know, like really. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm high class. This technology is not even out. Anyway, no. C congratulations again, anonymous. I mean, because they're going to need that money for that new baby that's coming. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tony, I need for yes. us back. I need. Okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> so. Hanif is 44, and he's from Philly. He had never been fully intimate with a woman, and he experienced anxiety every time he tried. Hanif writes, hello, Chris and Tony. I know you don't like long emails, so I'll cut to the chase. I'm in therapy, and I've been diagnosed as demise de demisexual. De demisexual. My therapist also gave me deep breathing techniques to try, and, and to try, and I use aromatherapy and yoga as also recommended by my therapist. Lately, I've been embracing my sexuality and I'm no longer afraid of intimacy because I only want to be intimate with someone I have feelings for. Although I'm not currently dating, I recently approached a woman at my gym to whom I find myself very attracted. We've been on a couple of dates, but we haven't gone out lately due to our schedules. However, we still text and talk every chance we get. I have feelings for her and I could actually see us being intimate. The woman I worked with, who I had a crush on, actually turned out to be separated, not divorced, like she had told me. Found out they still lived together, 
And she even told me that they are still intimate occasionally. I really can't stand liars. I'm happy that I dodged that bullet. I hope this update makes your next show. I'm sorry I couldn't send it. So that could make it on to the December show, but I had some things going on and I got the message too late. Thanks for your help. Ha Leaf. Tommy. <laughs> I had such high hopes for the woman and Hanif. I really, really did. Uh, but I'm glad he's seen uh, a therapist. I really am because I feel like that was probably like um, the more important solution than working it or try to you know work something out with the woman. Um, so it's very good that the therapist has helped him to diagnose you know what the the issue is. And so hopefully he's working through that. So the deep breathing exercises and um, you know, the things that she he or she suggested, that's um, awesome. So I really hope that, you know, Honey is working through it. And maybe the next episode, we can get another uh, update saying that he's met someone or something. So, yay. You know, um, demisexuality is very common, um, I've mm -hmm. learned. And I'm glad, you know, he's able to put a label on what it was he was experiencing. And, you know, he wanted to come on the show with us, but he wasn't able to because of the schedule. And then we weren't able, we were, you know, all, all, over, all over the place trying to get this show to happen. Um, but we yeah. actually, so he and I actually FaceTimed. And he's really cool. Like, he's a really nice guy. But I, I had to, like, have a moment with him. I had to tell him, like, don't end up like that guy Lance turned it. And if you know, you know who that guy is. Because he was messing around mm -hmm. with separated women. And the woman yeah. ended up killing him. Um, but I know, but see now, everyone wants to know what Hadith looks like. Because Hadith just had like this really, I guess, attractive description. And I'm the, Tony knows this about me. I'm very good at accurately describing people. And he said it was okay if I described him. So, um, and mainly because I told him the description I was going to use, and he said it was on point. So, so, okay, Tony, so get ready. Hanif looks like if Shamar Moore were full black, okay? Okay. Tyrese's complexion, maybe even a little bit darker. He's a dark-skinned guy. And he's, like, mm -hmm. heavier, but not fat. Like, he, you can tell that he works out, but, like, his yeah. face is, is fuller, and he has the beard. The, the, they call it the Suna beard. Well, the freeway beard is, you know, the Philly beard. Yeah. Um, right, right. <laughs> yeah, the Philly, but you know what I used to have. You guys know what Philly beard is. Um, and his eyes are kind of like a light brown color, almost like hazel. Very, very attractive guy. And he has braces. And he said he's going to get his, uh, he said he's getting his braces off this summer. So I said, you know, don't hurt him. You know, right, honey, about to be outside. Okay. <laughs> but, but thank you for getting back to us. And I'm glad that we were able to help you. And Listen, Hanif guys has to heal. Please do not DM me asking me for Hanif information, <laughs> what Hanif phone number is, or his iCloud, or iMessage, or whatever. Like, let him work through his shit so that his shit doesn't work for him. But, um, Coach Tony, any takeaways today? Um, so I guess some, a couple of the takeaways are that people are actually listening to some of the advice that we're giving. So I really appreciate that. Um, a couple of takeaways were shoppers, but in a good way. <laughs> we're going to Ohio for a baby shower. <laughs> These these were really good updates and the new questions that we have were pretty good questions. Yeah. So yeah, I like this. I mean, yeah. I'll just say this. I'm glad you guys start stop talking at us, finally. Cause y'all used to talk to us, and um, <laughs> I like I don't like that. Um, oh oh oh, hump day sales fifty percent off. Bkparties dot com <laughs> slash six one zero nine, and also um, check out Tony's lives. Um, she'll post a live Tuesday night. Was it Tuesday? You my did? story. Oh, you're still. I'm sorry. Um, I'm the live. Oh, your story. Yep, it's my stories okay. and i'll usually post the story on like wednesday morning okay so uh, wednesday morning so wednesday yeah. morning go to bedroom candy underscore by tony there's an underscore between the i and the and, and the b right uh yes yeah the i and the b okay 
look at me photographic memory today, but, but still can't figure out acronyms. It's a mess. Um, and, and it's the other thing, because I mentioned this earlier. This happened before we started taping the show. A man is not going to honk his horn passive aggressively if he likes you. And he's not. He's also not going to penetrate you too, so hard to where you end up in the yard. You know what I'm saying? Like even with, with dating, if a person doesn't like you, they're dissing you. I mean, you know, like Tony, they have a, a term for that now. It's called naked. When the guys like diss the girls, or you no. Know. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a name for everything. But um, yeah. but I'm also I'm glad that we do these shows because a lot of generational gatekeeping goes on within families regarding, especially regarding like women's health, you know? And I mean, Tony, you know this. I mean, everything from orgasms to childbirth to menopause. And it's important that you're here to have these dialogues with us, these open dialogues about these things because people don't even, I mean, honestly, people don't even talk about non-sexual health the way they should. Like I found out a lot of things recently about health issues that run in my family. And I'm like, well, why wouldn't you tell me this? You know, like we have to stop making people suffer in the dark. We just we gotta stop. But well, wait a minute. I have a question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, stop. Tony, you hear the caring one. All right. Okay. Should us men, should we be shaving down there? Well, technically, there is no right or wrong answer. It's all about preference. So if you do shave, it is going to expose more of the sensitive skin in that area. Um, but, so just be gentle. Um, now, what I will say is this. Um, some men do like the look and the feel of um, if they do shave. Just, you know, make sure that you are looking out for things like ingrown hairs and things of that nature. Um, also cutting yourself because the skin down there is more sensitive. Um, but on the flip side, if you do um, shave, well, on the flip side, I would say um, if you don't shave, excess hair can hide things like um, sweating, oil, bacteria. So that will cause more of an odor if you're not taking care of yourself and washing properly. Um, But it's just all about um, what's your preferences. So there's really no right or wrong answer about whether or not you should be shaving down there. Um, It's just ultimately, you know, your preference and there is no medical reason to shave down there. So yeah, it just depends on the person and their perspective on how they want to look and how how willing they are to take care of themselves. And be very careful doing that, guys, because you do not want to cut something down there. Mm-hmm. It, I can imagine. It's too late. All right. Now, we can't get to every question, but in, you know, a lot of you guys ask similar things. So we hope that you can apply you know, our answers. You can take our answers and apply them to your situation. Um, and you know, when we get something we need, we do what we can to answer. And I know you all remember Anonymous from last season who said, my husband is gay, please advise. I know y'all remember that. Well, she wrote us back this nasty, passive aggressive letter. And told me she was out of pocket. I was going to blast her, but then I said, you know what? She's got deeper issues, so let me not pick on the snow kid. You know, let me do it. Let me just move on. But, you know, we're here to help. But if you don't want our help, move around so we can help someone who does. And now also, it's been brought to our attention that some of you have been using objects as opposed to toys to masturbate. Bananas, squashes, bottles of Florida water. Yeah, I know. But we're grown. And you need to do things safely and responsibly. Use a damn toy. All right? Tony's Bedroom Candy Store is BK pot- bkparties.com slash 6109. And she has tons of toys there. Now, if there's a toy that you want, but you don't see it on the Bedroom Candy site, Go to thekittychronicles.co 
and there you can request it. Or just hit me with a uh, DM me on Instagram um, to see, you know, if there's something in particular that you don't see, I can recommend something that's really similar to it. Um, and then also, all of our toys are made with medical grade silicone. So regardless of if you purchase a thirty dollar toy or a hundred dollar toy, you're still going to get a quality product. Which is what you want because they're toys that are sold in other marketplaces. I won't name names. But you know what I mean by marketplace. You know what I'm talking <laughs> And you don't know what those toys are made out of. Some people, you know, I read the reviews and they talk about those toys and they smell funny. Nothing that you should be sticking in your body should smell funny. It really shouldn't have a smell at all. So, like I said, you know, Coach Tony Store, the, the link is at the bottom has what you need. And this was a good one, Coach. We get our weasons today. Yes. We, needed that, <laughs> we needed that little extra hour. Yes. Let everyone know, though, how they can get in touch with you, Tony. Sure. So again, uh, my bedroom candy site is bkparties.com slash 6109. Or you can go to my main website, thekittychronicles.co. I'm on there. I occasionally post a blog or two. Um, I haven't done it recently, but you can also link to my YouTube where I'll talk about products, things of that nature. So, um, yeah, those are my two sites. And then feel free to follow me on Instagram, uh, Instagram.com slash, well, at Bedroom Candy underscore by Tony. <laughs> it's fine. Either way, they'll figure it. They'll find it. It's yeah. fine. I know we're a little older, so we say Instagram.com slash. We did a whole <laughs> long thing. <laughs> Right. You know, and all the information is up. And um, you guys go, go to Tony's channel is probably one of two channels that I'm following because I don't follow a lot of channels. I don't like a lot of people on YouTube that like there are a lot of YouTubers that you just can't be bothered with. But you, I have, and I have another person. Um, but all of that information is up. And to everyone we didn't get today, we will get you next time because. Yeah. Coach Tony has a lot of summer reading. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> um, but Tony, what are you up to this summer? I mean, Leo season will be here before we know it. Leo season, yeah. Can't wait. So I'm going on a cruise, Bedroom Canada. We normally do um, our convention every August in Atlanta because, of course, that's where Candy lives. Um, but this year, we're taking it to the sea. So we're going to the Bahamas as our um, convention for Bedroom Candy. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then my husband and I are trying to plan a trip to Toronto. So looking forward to that as well. Maybe you'll see, uh, you know, BBL Jersey up there. <laughs> right. Um, but speaking right. of Leos, <laughs> speaking of Leos and lions, Tony, did you see the video of the lions in, in Africa? They were getting it in on top of the safari truck. No, I didn't. <laughs> Tony, it's so fitting because this is the sex show. The lions <laughs> were so okay. So in in Namibia and in South Africa, it's, it's pretty common, and I don't know, you know, what triggered it or whatever, but they just they just started getting it in on top of the the, the, uh, the safari truck. But oh my it reminded me, though, it's, it's crazy. It reminded me of this adult film. I'll just say it was an adult film that I saw years ago, and they were on top of a white chick. <laughs> YKYK, let's move on. And my, um, it's funny, my, my friend around the corner, my homie Stacy, he has a Jeep, Tony, and he has all these rubber ducks on his dashboard. Like, just, it's hilarious. But you know what's crazy? <laughs> he looks just like Ray J. Like, if you were to see him, oh, wow. like, uh -huh. you look more like Ray J than Ray J. <laughs> Shout out to Stacey. Um, so, Tony and Darwin have new additions that you've probably heard in the background. You know, I don't, they're not my additions. They're Tony and, and Darwin's new additions. So, Tony, share with the class, you, you know, your new additions. Yes, so our two dogs had puppies. So we have the two dogs plus eight puppies in the other room. There's four boys and four girls. And so far, we've managed to kind of get rid of, not get rid of, I don't want to say that, but um, five will be going to new homes. And we're still working for homes. But three of them, they're so freaking adorable, but I want them to go so freaking bad. It's not even funny. <laughs> So, yes. <laughs> I'm showing pictures now of the little baby G 
is just too cute. Uh, Look at that. Yeah. I'm obsessed with Nell. And thankfully, my sister is taking Nell. So Nell will still be in the family. So I'm happy about oh, that. No. <laughs> no. I posted videos on their Instagram because my two dogs have their own Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have it on the screen, but I, I have the Instagram. Did, so somebody oh, got okay. Baby G, right? Somebody got him? Yes. So as of now, um, Dot, Dot, unfortunately, um, she was going to go to a home, but something um, unfortunate happened with that home, so they can't take her now. So Dot, Fat So, and Cute Face are still available. Yes. <laughs> boom, boom. Where'd you get that name? <laughs> Because my husband, because Boom Boom is the biggest one, and oh, my yeah. husband, when he was a baby, he was chubby, oh, and they called him Fatty Boom Boom as a nickname. He's from the, he's from Grenada, so that's what his nickname was as a baby, Fatty Boom Boom. So, <laughs> because this one was probably the first puppy, and he was the biggest, we call him Boom Boom. Oh. <laughs> so isn't that crazy? Fat so isn't the, the biggest one. It's Boom Boom. Right. He that's so used to be mm. probably second. Him and Boom Boom were like the two biggest, but Boom Boom is just thriving. So oh, yeah. Listen, Caribbean folks are gonna tell you about how you look. Oh yes, yes, right. for sure. <laughs> they're gonna call you fat, they're gonna call you skinny, they're gonna call you too tall, too short, they're gonna remind you. Uh -huh. right. Good night to everybody in Caribbean. Good night. If you'd like to adopt one of these sweet little angel dog, puppy, creature, children, babies, DM their parents on IG at yes. WAPO, G-U-A-P-O, underscore, and underscore, Layla, L-E-I-L-A. Yes. Don't talk crazy in those DMs either because they are pit bulls and they will get you. Right. <laughs> and they're reasonably priced too, Tony. How much are you, how much are they? Six hundred with a two hundred dollar deposit. So altogether eight hundred, right? No, no, no. Oh, flat six hundred. Oh, flat six hundred. So you got to do two hundred yeah. first, and then you pay the other four. Yeah, two hundred is going to reserve them and let us know you really are coming to get them. Right. And then the remaining four hundred when they're available or when they're ready for pickup. Me and Tony were talking earlier before the show, and I told her she could have charged double that since they're purebred. <laughs> Y'all know me, you know I'm hot for booty. <laughs> but I'd rather you listen, I'd rather you guys buy them. They're from people we know. We know Tony and we know dog. Other than off of DoorDash. Okay? <laughs> because some lady in Jersey was using her DoorDash to sell puppies. And people were buying them too. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. I mean, but, but Tony, <laughs> if you if you if if they'll sell puppies on DoorDash, they'll sell something sinister. That's how I feel about it. Hey, right, exactly. Just, oh, just throw the whole. Just... Thanks for listening and watching. <laughs> tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, tell your boyfriend, tell your sister, tell your kittens, tell your bullies, tell their puppies, tell your OBGYN, <laughs> your endocrinologist. And your urologist. Listen, tell your doula too. Okay, and your midwife. Tell your FWB, your masseur, and everyone at the beauty supply store to follow us on Instagram at Chris David TV and follow our show at the Chris David Show on Instagram and YouTube. You can also visit ChrisDavidShow.com. There you'll find everything you need to know about the show. Before we go, your comfort comes first. Don't compromise your comfort. Bless and release. Don't invest in anyone or anything who doesn't give you interest. If someone doesn't love you the way you are, they don't love you. And you know what else? They didn't stop making dick when they made his, and they didn't stop making pussy when they made hers. Oh, and another one. He put that where? <laughs> Back there. <laughs> Now be kind, be well, and talk like sex rated XXX. <laughs> Holy, wait a minute. She's going to go out there and throw off her pH using hair gel. 
Yes. What the hell? <laughs> Could you imagine it? Oh my god. Yo, yeah, these people need to pick better broadcasts. Like, I swear. Right. Exactly. <laughs>